If true crime intrigues you, you're in the right place. We are exploring crime stories that are shaking up the news. Season one of Left Undone is following the Lori Vallow Daybell case. Lori Vallow is a mother with two missing children. She has joined a doomsday cult and people close to Lori are dying untimely deaths. Please like, subscribe, and ring the bell if you follow us on YouTube. And if you are following on the podcast platform, please rate and comment. Welcome to an episode of Left Undone, Incomplete Investigations. I'm Catherine. If you've been following the Lori Vallow Daybell case, you know who Julie Rowe is. We're going to explore a little bit about Julie Rowe and her contradictions in this episode. If you don't know who Julie Rowe is, just pay attention, watch, and we'll explain more later. Julie Rowe is an author, and Chad Daybell and Julie Rowe were very close for quite some time. But Julie Rowe has contradicted herself quite a bit in the Chad last is three months. Chad has been a close friend, um, and I had not even met Chad in person at that point. I had only seen him in vision and he had seen me in vision. We didn't meet in person until July of 2014 when I met he and his wife, Tammy, and their children. Um, it was actually that first summer when I met Tammy that my angels on the other side of the veil told me that Tammy would at some point in time in the future pass to the other side. Mm -hmm. That's a whole story in itself. I never mentioned a word of that to Chad. Um, he came to me later because he's visionary also, and he had been given some insight from, from the light side on the other side of the veil that his wife was going to pass. We talked about it extensively. I do energy work. Um, I did energy work with him to try to help him clear the emotions that he was feeling. He was grieving terribly at the news the light side was giving him. He was heartbroken. He cried to me several times about it. I cried with him. Um, and so there's a long history here with Chad. Speaking of news media, Julie, um, you know, as I watch these, they're making a pretty compelling case about some of the accusations Fair. against him. Do you think it's possible that Chad and his new wife, Lori, are innocent of any foul play that, that all these not accusations? Not, not only is it possible, I know he is. Okay. I know Chad Daybell's heart. We talked. You had a I little know. bit different message, and it was more like along the lines of Chad is innocent, everything's okay, he didn't do anything wrong. Okay. So has your story changed? Well, let me let me clarify that. I never said he didn't do anything wrong. Okay. I just said he didn't hurt the kids, and he didn't hurt Tammy. First... And then he went on to say something about, you know, uh, Lori and I have been silent for three months. And I hope that when I come back, I can tell my story and the subscribers will still be there. Interesting. So to me, that was Chad drawing his battle lines because I had held back. I held back for over three months about sharing certain details because I did not want to take his relation, his um, reputation. I did not want to hurt his kids. I did not want to hurt his extended family. I wanted to protect them as much as I could. And I didn't want to make this public. But when Chad did that, he dragged me through the mud and my reputation and my story, which means he drew the battle lines and I, I now consider him an enemy instead of a friend. Yeah. Lori Brellows, I've never met her, but I did see her in vision and I have a mutual friend who sent me a picture of her and Chad and a few other women in somebody's kitchen. I, you know, I don't necessarily always agree with Chad and he doesn't always agree with me. But we have a common respect for each other. I believe that he still considers me a friend. I consider him a friend. I, I want to know where all of Chad's friends are. Either nobody's coming forward because they're scared to death or they're questioning his integrity. And so I consider that cowardly. Or they're being shut down and they're not having a voice because the media and the police are corrupt. And I don't know what it is. I believe there are plenty of good people that have called the police department with leads. Maybe even a character witness. And they're not being presented. My gift. And all I has. What is the underlying cause or purpose or motive? Those are all different things, but they tie in for anyone involved in this case. What's the motive of the media? What's the motive of Lori Vallow? I don't know Lori, but when I look at her energy, I can tell you what I see. What I see is a woman, and what I hear is a woman 
who was severely abused in a marriage by an abusive husband, and she escaped a really bad marriage. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to blame her one bit for that. I'm going to congratulate her. Whether or not, what's the motive of Lori Vallow's estranged family? What's Chad Daybell's motive? What's the police department's motive? What's the Rexburg Police Department um, connection? What's, what's, what has East Idaho News got, got in this, right? What's the FBI got in this? What's their motive? We would like to think that people have pure motives. And what I see here is every single one of these people I just named has a form of impure motive involved. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No one has clean hands and it's messy. And when I look at the energy, it's like this convoluted, nasty energy ball that's so gross, so gross. She has not been a god. There are, quote unquote, archangels that have condescended to the planet and are living in reincarnated states. They are on the planet. We do have translated beings on this planet, and we also have shapeshifters. Lori Fallow is not one of them. So she's got dark spirits talking to her, telling her stuff. I don't, I don't know what's going on there other than it's not correct. You're sensing the convoluted nature of this. You feel the darkness. The word is, the... The word is gross. That's the word that comes to me. It's okay. gross. It's, it's gross. And I could tell you how I see. I could see the actual demons involved. I, I mean, for fear of sounding crazy, right? What do I have to fear? People already think I'm crazy, Eric. So... Right. <laughs> I see Lucifer's hand in this. That's who I see. Okay. Lucifer himself is orchestrating this crazy messed up ball of energy. Okay. In all these stories that are going out, I think one of the bigger concerns is that the children are okay. The two children. Can you see, do you see anything, hear anything, feel anything with regard to those two children? I deal in human trafficking, soul trafficking every day. This is part of my life. In what way? Can you explain and how? On a spiritual level, I spirit travel, I go over this, I go over all of this whole galaxy and there's soul trapping going on and there's human trapping on this planet. I have emergency disaster relief safe houses. I am not hiding Chad or his kids. I have not talked, I've never met Lori, I've never met her kids and I have not talked to Chad. I did ask that question about the two children, okay, which is, I think is one of the big questions people I, have in their minds. Are they okay? I'm, I am in such an uproar about the backstory being twisted and turned and people not knowing and they get all this fear and anxiety and manipulation and control and yada yada and they believe the authorities and they believe the media when they should be actually listening to like what their heart tells them yeah. and get rid of their fear energy and, and maybe like ask your guardian angel but you know we don't live in a world like that <sighs> the kids are safe I have nothing to do with it I don't know where they are I have talked to their spirits, you, okay? The kids are safe for now. I can't guarantee you what Lori and Chad will do with those kids once they hear my view or once they know they're outed or once they get more desperate if, you know, they feel like the cops are going to really come after them. This I know. The police know where they are. The FBI know where they are. I think Chad and Lori know they know where they are and they're reassured through their attorney that things are going to be fine. That maybe Lori and Chad don't know the cops know where they are, but Chad does have some gifts. I don't know the extent. I was told last February and I have witnesses to it that based on some of Chad's experiences and his decisions at that point in time, he was no longer going to get pure revelation from the light side like he had been because he had crossed some boundaries and had not, um, what's the word for it? Um, let me just leave it at that. He, he was not, I was told very clearly he was not going to get clear answers and that I basically shouldn't listen to anything Chad Babel said. Okay. And we talked for at least 40 minutes. I'm not going to go into that conversation other than to say that it was a shock to her and that she told me it was a shock to her dad that he had found her. And I believe that Emma was authentic. I scanned Chad's energy. His heart was broken. He couldn't believe that it had happened like that. He and I talked over three years ago, two and a half, three years ago, we had both seen her in a car accident 
we thought maybe she was going to go a year ago in a car accident because it so, it seemed so constant that we both kept seeing this vision. About a year ago, I got a message from the other side that the plan had changed for Tammy, that they had extended her time on Earth. I don't even know what that means, Eric. I was just hearing that. I ran it by Chad, and he said, I've been given the same message. I'm grateful I have more time. He told me, I asked him three weeks before she died, Chad, are you still seeing Tammy dying? And he said, yes, but I don't know how. And I don't remember what else he said about it other than I said I had been asking too. And then my angel said, yes, she's going to go. She's almost graduated from mortality. And I had a vision of literally this group of family members on her side of the veil getting ready to receive her. And they were all in white. And it looked like they were making preparations for her. So I knew it was soon and I didn't tell Chad that because just because I see it doesn't mean I say it. And especially related to like babies being born or somebody dying or anything to do with somebody's life plan and agency, I keep my mouth shut. And I do know that Tammy got held up by gunpoint a week to a week and a half before she died by a man in black. And I know Chad had nothing to do with it because Chad was upset and so, and so was her son, and so was her daughter, and the whole family got together to try to deal with it. I do not know who that man on block is. I have my ideas, I have my suspicions, and it's somebody that has a personal vendetta against Chad Dable and his mission, what he's doing. Mm. He's being framed exactly where he is out of his own mouth. I haven't talked to him. I don't know what's gone on in his personal life with Lori in the last year. I have no idea. But I do know that my angels tell me that Chad Dable is being falsely accused of, of a suspicious death of his wife. I do know that if there's foul play involved, which I don't believe there is, it was not Chad. And Lori moved to, after he died, she moved up to Rexburg. Well, gee, Chad lives there. But also she believes that's a gathering place. And she was also having problems with her estranged family who was trying to get custody and they're angry that their son got shot and killed. And she was in an abusive marriage. Charles was abusive. I see drug history and all kinds of stuff going on that were being hidden. Ask me how I know this. It's my gift. I have talked to Tammy's spirit. Tammy's spirit came and visited me the morning of my class in San Diego. What? And so it was no surprise to me that she had passed. But Tammy can spirit split. So she's come to visit me in spirit before. The spirit looks a little different. But I can tell you this much. Tammy is in a very happy place. She's wearing white right now. She is um, grateful the plan is rolling forward. She's grateful she did her part. She was well received. She's in paradise. And she's having a great time with beloved family members and friends that missed her a great deal. And she's missing her kids and her husband but she knows the plan and she's on board on the other side of the bill. She's participating in this phone call right now. That's how active Tammy is involved in wanting to get the truth out. Those two kids, Lori Vallow's two kids, I see them. The seven-year-old is laughing. He's having a good time. The 17-year-old is watching over him wherever they are. I believe that he has done some brainwashing with them. I believe he's still using them. Rose says she never met Lori or Lori's children, JJ and Tylee, but believes it's incredibly selfish how Chad and his new wife have been acting. Chad's kids were left for the holidays after their mom just died with their dad taken off to Hawaii with another woman. They have to see pictures of him getting married on the beach, holding hands while they're stuck in Idaho with the FBI raiding them and police storming their houses and their records and their personal lives. And he's MIA in Hawaii. She says she noticed a shift in Chad about a year and a half ago. Julie says she also received a warning from angels about Lori, which she tried to share with Chad. I told him exactly what my angels told me. And he told me, well, I've been married to her before. And um, I got a big warning on that. And um, I looked in the future and I saw some stuff. And I was concerned. Chad and Julie eventually had a falling out in 2019. When she finally spoke with him on the phone, something he said about his then wife, Tammy, disturbed her. And three weeks before Tammy dies, he said to me, and he was kind of in this frustrated voice, my plan can't move forward until Tammy's dead. I was disheartened. I was very disturbed by that. 
because if anyone understands how a person's plan works, people don't get in the way of our plans. Our plans are our plans, especially our spouses. And we are married to them for a reason. Their attorney didn't immediately respond to InsideEdition.com's request for comment. When it comes to finding JJ and Tylee, Julie's message for her former friend is simple. It's never too late to just come clean and tell the truth. This is she's been babysitting him. They're in a safe place. It's light, it's well lit. Every scene they show me, there's lights on and it's sunny. I had a scene the other night where it was dark because it was dark outside, but they had the lights on. They're not in hiding as far as uh, from who you think they're in hiding from. They're not in hiding from the FBI and police who are of the light. We have moles in the police department and the FBI and they're in cahoots with the family. And, and I don't believe that Lori's extended family of her estranged husband has pure motive. What my angels are telling me is that there's an underlying custody battle going on. Now, I'm not talking to anyone. So if the FBI wants to, you know, talk to me about that they can listen to my podcast and hear exactly what I'm going to tell them I am being honest they can get body experts to study my body language and my eyes and my hand motions and they'll see I am legitimately telling the truth and I don't believe he he has it in him to hurt any child or his wife he's raised five amazing beautiful kids I do know that Laura Vallow's second husband was abusive she was estranged from his family because she was associating with, quite frankly, a higher vibration group. And they didn't like it because she she got out of the abusive patterns and the family. And he got angry when he came to pick up the kids. And the brother, this is what I see in my head. I haven't talked to anybody. This is the scene I see in my head. As he came to the door, they got into it. He stepped in. There was an altercation. Lori's brother stepped forward. It got physical, um, the push shove kind of stuff. Lori's ex husband hit her brother over the head. I can't even tell you their names. I've read it in the newspaper and I don't even that's not even important. People can read it on their own. He he hit him over the head, hit him on the shoulder. Um, and in self defense, the the brother the visual I get is he had a he, he has the concealed carry or something and he had a gun on him and he pulled it. He didn't go get a gun, he had it on him and it was a self defense. If you look at how they're um, framing the verbiage on the media, because this goes into a huge legal case, no one can, they have no proof. They, they looked at the murder case, quote, 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 right? Um, after it happened and no one was charged. If the police had had any reason to suspect that it was anything other than self-defense based on the evidence then, they would have hauled him into prison. They would have already put him in jail. They would put Lori. It would have already been in motion. Now, who is behind the quote unquote mysterious death of Lori's brother? I don't know. He could have died of natural consequences. He could have had suicide. He could have had somebody poison his food. But I know this, it wasn't Lori and it wasn't Chad. They're not behind any of those deaths. And people are even trying to say Lori's first husband died of a heart attack, and now that looks suspicious. Really? For cl we break for lunch, and my head of security comes over, and he says, um, Tammy Daybell has died. And he, and he tells me how we found that out. And, and, and basically, Chad's daughter had texted one of my contacts' wives, um, and that's how we found out, right? So... I immediately get in the car. I, I leave because I always leave and take a lunch break so that people don't talk to me so I can have a break, you know. And I go get in the car. My head of security is driving me and I, I call her. And um, I talk to her for 40 minutes to the daughter. Now, this is fresh. It's raw. Okay. Her mom, she had just found out, what, like six hours before, four hours before, right, that her mom had died. And her dad had never told any of the kids that he saw in vision or knew that she was going to pass away. But the first thing she asks me, and she knows my gifts and she knows her dad's gifts. The first thing she asked me is, did my dad know? Oh, wow. And I'm left with a choice. Do I lie or do I tell the truth? 
knowing that Chad has lied to everyone already on on the proper website saying it was a shock. And he said that at the funeral. She also received a warning from angels about Lori, which she tried to share with Chad. I told him exactly what my angels told me. And he told me, well, I've been married to her before. And um, I got a big warning on that. And um, I looked in the future and I saw some stuff and I was concerned. Chad and Julie eventually had a falling out in 2019 when she finally spoke with him on the phone, something he said about his then wife, Tammy, disturbed her. And three weeks before Tammy dies, he said to me, and he was kind of in this frustrated voice, my plan can't move forward until Tammy's dead. I was disheartened. I was very disturbed by that because if anyone understands how a person's plan works, People don't get in the way of our plans. Our plans are our plans, especially our spouses. And we are married to them for a reason. Their attorney didn't immediately respond to InsideEdition.com's request for comment. When it comes to finding JJ and Tylee, Julie's message for her former friend is simple. It's never too late to just come clean and tell the truth. This is your I believe that he still considers me a friend. I consider him a friend. I, I want to know where all of Chad's friends are. Either nobody's coming forward because they're scared to death or they're questioning his integrity. And so I consider that cowardly. Or then Lori moved to, after he died, she moved up to Rexburg. Well, gee, Chad lives there. But also she believes that's a gathering place. And she was also having problems with her estranged family who was trying to get custody and they're angry that their son got shot and killed. And she was in an abusive marriage. Charles was abusive. I see drug history and all kinds of stuff going on that were being hidden. Ask me how I know this is my gut. I don't know about you. I do know what my gut instinct tells me about these people, including Julie Rowe. Julie Rowe contradicts herself completely every time. Julie Rowe does not have gifts. Julie Rowe, in my opinion, is a false prophet. You will know them by their fruits. Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. You will know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes from the thorn bushes or figs from the thistles? Even so, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into a fire. Therefore, by their fruits, you will know them. Julie Rowe contradicts herself in this entire three month span from December to February. Julie Rowe says her and Chad are great friends, that even she knows for a fact they're innocent. She knows these kids are safe, but then she avoids the question. I would like to know why Julie Rowe talks out of both sides of her mouth and jumps on things as soon as they happen to claim them out as her own again. Is she a false prophet? I say yes. Thank you for watching another episode of Left Undone Incomplete Investigations. I'm Catherine.